statement from Mazen Kumsey, who is the director of the new Natural History Museum in Palestine. And we titled this uh, exhibit Natural History, and you'll find out why when Deborah talks. But we're very, very excited to talk a little bit about that museum as well. One of the reasons that I was so interested in doing this exhibit of Deborah's work is because at the Jerusalem Fund and the Palestine Center, we do a lot of discussions uh, and lectures and talks and presentations about things like home destruction in Palestine and destruction of olive groves in Palestine. But we haven't had a lot of discussion about the fact that the natural environment in Palestine is also being decimated. The animals, the flora, the fauna, everything is, is affected by what's going on in, in terms of the occupation. And so I was very interested when I learned of Deborah's work and, and her point of view in bringing this to the fore in the way that an artist would do it, in the sense of presenting really beautiful work that is something that you want to look at, that you want to learn more about, and then you find out about sort of the, the, the hidden meaning, uh, the, the, the really important meaning behind the work. So that's what the show is about. But please let me read Mazin's statement for you. Dear friends, thank you for the honor to transmit these words for you, for you from our new Palestine Museum of Natural History at Bethlehem University, and for dedicating part of any sales of Deb's amazing and beautiful work to help our museum at the Palestine Center do the good work for Palestine. I lived in the United States for over a dozen years and had close working relationships with colleagues in Washington, including the founders of the Palestine Center. Deb came to Palestine, and I took her around to see both the beauty of our country and our people, but also the ugliness of the colonial occupation. Deb started drawing life under occupation and showed me her paintings, which she finished in the United States and then sent to me high-resolution images. Thus, I suggested to Deb to show her pieces at this great center, a beacon of hope and a candle of light in this city otherwise full of darkness. I'm glad this came about and so successfully. Since launching in June 2014, the Palestine Museum of Natural History achieved remarkable and accelerated growth. The museum held a science festival that brought hundreds of school children and volunteers together for activities like experiments and discussions on things ranging from critical thinking to physics to environmental protection. The museum published significant research on biodiversity and initiated several new projects of research, some involving molecular and cytogenic techniques. The museum continues also to study general toxic and environmental impact of Israeli colonial activities. The museum worked hard on our land site to create and reclaim an integrated ecosystem of indigenous Palestinian animals and plants. We began to rehabilitate some injured and abandoned wild animals. The museum began to develop permaculture and aquaculture. We are recycling and upcycling waste material. We're creating a digital library for fauna and flora. With volunteer efforts and only individual donations, we are accomplishing so much. We ask you to partner with us. Together we can achieve a lot more, and we thank Deb and you for your support. So please buy these wonderful pieces of art and do come visit us in Palestine. That's Mazen Kimsey. Now I'd like to introduce Deb Van Gogh. Well, good evening. Thank you all very much for coming here tonight. I'm deeply honored by your presence here and your interest in my artwork. I'm seeing I should raise this. How's that? <laughs> so thank you again for all coming here tonight. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, feeling so, so pleased that, that you want to hear about my work and my trip to Palestine. I'm also very appreciative to Dagmar Painter, the curator of this exhibit. She did such a wonderful job hanging the exhibit and working with me throughout this whole process been wonderful to work with and I'm very thankful to the Palestine Center and the Jerusalem Fund for having this really thriving community of people and all these uh, wonderful folks that come to these types of events. 
So now I'll share just a few words about my own background and why I decided to make art about the natural history in Palestine. First, I'll tell a little bit about my own background. I grew up in the Midwest. My family moved around quite a bit due to my dad's job with an insurance company. So I attended 10 different schools growing up. But in each place that my family lived, I was always enveloped within a private, white, privileged, Protestant, very tight-knit subculture. Throughout my upbringing, I was never taught about any other views of the world besides the right one. I attended a small private Christian high school and a private Christian college. In those schools, my independent thoughts, which involved questioning the dominant paradigm, were simply discouraged. But finally, for my last semester of college, I attended a program in the mountains of Southern Oregon. The professors at this school promoted critical thinking amongst their students. We were instructed to deconstruct the various dominant worldviews of our American culture. But not only was my mind freed of this program in Oregon, my entire self was stimulated by living in a rural environment for the first time in my life. So I, while living at 5,000 foot elevation, 20 miles from the closest town, in the midst of thriving conifer forests, I began learning to love wild landscapes. In the succeeding years, I found that I felt deeply renewed and energized when spending time in biodiverse, thriving ecosystems. So I ended up living in the mountains of southern Oregon for eight years, and then I lived in the mountains of southern Montana for another eight years. I also checked out Guatemala's Lago de Paten in the north and its rainforest, and I also spent two years living in the remote Himalayan region of Ladakh, India, which is a small area in the far northwest of India, or northeast of India, sandwiched between Tibet and Kashmir. So throughout all these years of falling in love with nature in all these various places, I also learned about all the threats to wilderness areas. In fact, the whole earth is under attack. In the northwest of the U.S., as well as in Guatemala, I observed up close how the devastating practice of clear-cutting ancient forests destroys entire ecosystems, which won't recover any time within my lifetime or even within the next several generations. In Ladakh, India, I saw some of climate change's destructive impacts up close when unprecedented flash floods shocked everyone there. One flash flood trapped 16 other foreigners and myself in a village for 12 days, while many other floods killed hundreds of people and houses and destroyed tens of thousands of fruit and nut-bearing trees throughout Ladakh. This all happened in one day. So that's an example of climate change, and there's more and more examples of climate change, climate chaos happening. So now in spring of 2013, I traveled to the West Bank of the Palestine Occupied Territories in order to experience the beauty of that landscape and also to bear witness to its demise and to the repression of the Palestinian people. So here's a little background on this trip. In the winter of 2012, when I was living near Asheville, North Carolina, I joined the group, the Western Carolinians for Peace and Justice in the Middle East. It was founded by Tony Bank. We promoted the BDS movement and specifically the boycotting of soda stream products. So when one member of the North Carolina group heard my desire to produce art about Palestine, he handed me a grant application from a war tax resistors group. After receiving this grant, I was also gifted a month-long stay in a guest house of the Applied Research Institute of Jerusalem in Beit Savor. Then I arrived in the West Bank of April 2013. It was a fairly smooth process. It was, uh, I felt very fortunate to, to express this wish, and then it happened within a few months. So early in my month-long trip, I connected with the geneticist and former Duke professor, Mazen Kumseya, and his wife, Jessie Chang, who have lived in Mazen's hometown in Beit Sahur for the past seven years. Mazen now teaches biology at Bethlehem University, and he's working with volunteers 
and they've opened the, the new Palestine Museum of Natural History. In fact, just a few minutes after meeting Mazen at a falafel restaurant, he ushered me quickly into a Swiss group's tour bus to hear his fascinating stories of rich Palestinian history. So on this trip to the villages of al Walija and Batir, Mazen pointed out the tragedies of bulldozed homes and the proposed apartheid wall construction, as well as the threat of the destruction of Batir's ancient terraces because of proposed wall construction. Mazen and Jesse also took me on several wildlife scouting forays where I learned more about the West Bank's natural history and amazing biological diversity. Mazen, Mazen, it was a real treat to be with Mazen. I can't express that enough to hear about how much he knows about the, the d diversity of the landscape there and how much he cares about every single insect and lizard and bird and plant that's there. And he knows firsthand about how these things are disappearing rapidly. So Mazen elaborated on the Israeli Defense Force's destruction of the landscape through the clear cutting of olive trees, the theft of water, the building of roads and walls, the forced extraction of people from their land, and the relentless, as he called it, the warehousing of the people into the crowded cities, out of the villages. So it is very clear to me that when the Palestinians are taken off their lands, the land suffers and the local ecosystems are severely damaged. Now, I will highlight some of the artworks from my trip, which are here at the gallery now, some, some of which hopefully you saw before you came in. So first I'll discuss my painting of the wildlife refuge, al Auja. What is very important to know about this scene is that the once thriving, beautiful ecosystem pictured is in serious decline. So Dagmar introduced uh, my show very well when she said, you know, these paintings have a story behind them. There's a, there's a meaning. So this is one of my favorite paintings I've ever completed. Um, but it's, it's, it's a tragic story to, to really learn what's going on in this scene. Um, so this is a, an ecosystem in serious decline because several Israeli settlements have been built on the hills surrounding the refuge. As of spring of 2013, Mazen said that there were five settlements above the refuge, <coughs> with all which are stealing the water out of the stream flowing through the refuge, stealing the water from all the plants, animals, and insects, and fish, populating the once vibrant and now very vulnerable refuge below. And Mazen tells me this is the type of thing happening all over the West Bank right now. Place after place after place. The water is, is you know, essential to the health of these ecosystems. It's just being taken away. So also the painting of the ancient terraces of Batir village um, is, is very important because this um, village recently made history. This past June, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, also known as UNESCO, um, this UNESCO granted world heritage status to the Roman era terraces and irrig irrigation systems of Batir. So this is very exciting to me because when I was in Batir, they were, they were trying to get this status. And then I learned just this past June that that, that was granted to, um, to Batir. So the residents of Batir and countless other people who care about Palestine um, are hoping that this designation will prevent the IDF from growing through with their plans to build the apartheid wall right through the delicate and unique agricultural features of Batir. So that plan was in the works and it really looks like that is on hold right now. Another place where I witnessed the irresponsible treatment of a precious water resource is the ancient Marsaba Monastery located near Bethlehem. So there's a, a, this is another large watercolor painting out there. So in order to get a good view of the monastery, my three friends and I hiked down into the valley below the monastery where a, where a creek is flowing. As we came closer to the creek, I was disgusted by the stench coming from the stream. My Palestinian friend, Hijazi, who brought us there, told us that the area is polluted because people living in the settlements upstream, near Jerusalem, are dumping their waste directly into the stream. 
Now, on a more upbeat note, the painting of the view from Beit Jala simply features the West Bank's beautiful grassy fields, olive trees, and gardens. That painting is up closer to the entrance. And two of my other favorites show Mazen and his student working in the field, um, gathering specimens for the new Museum of Natural History. The one <coughs> painting of Mazen, he's looking into uh, some traps that he had set out. Most of the, we set out about seven or eight traps, and every one of them caught the regular field mouse, but one of the traps caught a shrew, and Mazen was very elated to uh, find the rare shrew in one of these traps um, to, to, you, to help demonstrate the biodiversity of Palestine at his museum. So um, I hope my paintings at this exhibit reflect the beauty of the Palestinian landscape and also remind viewers of the urgency for a liberation of the Palestinian people and their lands. 20% of the proceeds from any of the sales in this show will benefit the work of Al-Quds Gallery here at the Jerusalem Fund, and 20% of the sales will go to the new Palestinian Museum of Natural History at Bethlehem University. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'd, I'd uh, love to take any questions.